Hi, I'm Jason Inman. And I'm Asha Victoria Robinson. And welcome to Blackest Night Club. We're diving into the important issues in the DC Comics mega event known as Blackest Night. We're looking for Easter eggs. We're giving you theories about how they could do the storyline in live action. And if you haven't read it yet, there will be spoilers. Come on, guys, episode seven. There's gonna be spoilers. We have an official reading order that we're putting on screen right now, or if you're listening to the audio version of this, you know, it's around the internet, go find it. Uh, <laughs> this video is gonna make a lot more sense once you do, and if you don't know, at this point, Black Lanterns are zombies, and they're punching Hal Zordon. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're listening to this, go back to my Instagram from about a year ago to find the reading order. Oh, dear God. <laughs> we'll, we'll update it one. Come on. Yeah, Come yeah, on. Yeah. Today's video will cover Green Lantern 49, Blackest Night number six, and Green Lantern 50. All right. Green Lantern, Volume 4, number 49, with the cover date of February 2010. It was written by Jeff Johns, penciled by Ed Bennis and Marcos Mars, inked by Ed Bennis and another person, colored by Hi-Fi Design, lettered by Rob Lee, and edited by Eddie Berganza and another person. So, it's been a minute since the last time I read these issues and John was actually, like, in anything. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since we've seen the John Jancy storyline, which has been ignored to this point. I forgot, like, we sure did take John Stewart and just bench him for this event, mm -hmm. didn't we? Because only Hal can be with the multicolored core. I mean, God forbid yep. we let anyone other than Hal Jordan do anything. And here's the other problem with this. At, at this point, John Stewart didn't have a title. John, because Green Lantern Corps was Guy and Kyle. The Kyle, yeah. Now, John showed up there every once yeah, in a while, yeah, yeah. but John kind of only showed up in Hal's title. And at this point, this is Jeff Johns's Green Lantern. Yeah, I'm gonna just state right out of the, the bank that I don't like this issue. I will agree with this. I was gonna say, I think Ed Bennis crushed the art. Mm -hmm. Always does. But like, great, we're still doing Zanshi. Great, we're still doing Katmatui. Like, we have seen all of the beats of this except the flashback, which mm -hmm. I know you wanna speak a little bit yep. to. In pre to me, this issue is a waste. Yeah. And it would have been, I would have rather seen John flying through space to get to the core for 20 pages. Mm. I just don't see what this really adds to the overall arc. It feels like we've, we're pumping the brakes a little well, bit. Well, the one important thing that this is, do you know why this is an important issue to Jon Stewart specifically? Specifically Jon Stewart. Because it's a retcon? No. Uh, well, yes and no. But this is the first time that we see a flashback to his history as a Marine. Yeah which was actually his history as a Marine was retconned 25 issues earlier. Uh, this is something that I talk about a lot in my book, Super Soldiers, available on Amazon and jasoninman.com store. Go talk about it. I have a whole John Stewart chapter. This is the issue that reveals that he was a Marine sniper. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of problems in this because he, kept, he keeps mentioning himself as a soldier. Marines are not soldiers. Yep. Soldiers are soldiers, army. Marines are Marines. But I will say that I like the double page spread with John and all the armed forces yes. members behind him. I think that's really good. But there is also, yeah, this is a little filler, but there is a little bonus in this at the very end of this, because in Blackest Night 5, we talked about Adam and Mara getting sucked into the atomic skin oh, yes. of a Black Lantern ring by Jean Loring. Ashley, who is Jean Loring? She's the lady that like done murdered Sue. She's uh, Ray Palmer's wife. Were they, was she his wife? I thought she was only his girlfriend. She's his wife. She's Who, bad. But she did murder Sue in Identity Crisis. And this is the thing where we get like sort of the origin of Necron and we learn that the Guardians are seen as the Guardians of the white light of life. Mm -hmm. And because the universe works in balances, that is how Necron became the Guardian of oh, Death. So, um, and that's something that had not been explained up to this point, which is kind of cool. I actually like this little backup story. Drawn by amazing artist Jerry Ordway. And then I, I like the inclusion of Dead Man in this Old as well. Oh, Dead Man. I think, I think Dead Man, who we talked a lot about when we were reading the Blackest Night Batman issues, I think Dead Man is really smartly employed mm -hmm. where he appears throughout Blackest Night. Very underrated as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also like that we get to see Mara. Like, Mara is like a badass in this story for yep. the first time, and that's yep. really cool. All right, now let's move on to Blackest Night, number six, with the cover date of February 2010. It was written by Jeff Johns, penciled by Yvonne Reese, inked by Eau Claire Albert and others, colored by Alex Eau Claire, lettered by Nick J. Nap. Politano. Did I get it? I have no idea. Beautiful uh, cover. Edited by Eddie Berganza and 
Adam Slagman. Actually, we gotta talk about first off here. The regular cover of this by Yvonne Reese is my favorite cover of Blackest Night. This was the cover, this cover has been on a lot of the soft cover select yep. uh, uh, collections of all of the Blackest Of the multicolored Lanterns. If you go to Google Images and you search Blackest Night covers mm -hmm. or any Blackest Night any tie-in, this cover always shows up. It's yep. always the most searched image. I've actually seen DC use this cover actually in a lot of just like other promotional stuff, like a lot of other Green Lantern stuff. Yes, I think this is the cover of the Green Lantern Blackest Night trade as well. Mm. Has Or has been at some point. Yeah, it's yeah. a great cover. So we left the last issue of Blackest Night that all these sort of living people got Black Lanterns. Like Superman became a living Black Lantern, Wonder Woman, and then two rings came for Hal and Barry. And... Hal throws a chain or a rope to Barry, and Barry does this really cool thing, and I think this is a cool way to use the Flash's powers because that's something that is very predictable now. Yes. Flash runs two seconds into the future, and it severs the connection to the Black Ring. Because they think they've died. Yes, I think that is one of the most creative ways to use. I love, and I love the line of Barry being like, "I'm faster than the Ring." Yeah, I liked this because I'm going to be honest, I think there is way too much Barry Allen Flash in this. Well, again... Uh, je speaking to the whole arc... Bar Flash Rebirth, that the storyline that brought Barry Allen back, is happening at the same time. I get it. <laughs> I get it. And I get that Jeff John's very favorite he freaking character in the whole yeah. gosh dang universe is Barry Allen. And for me, that's not the case. You're never going to convince me that Barry's cool. You're never going to convince me that he should have come back to life. However... All of that baggage aside, yep. this is a really smart use of Barry Allen and the Flash. I like this better than all of those issues ago when Mara and Adam were like, well, if we're Wonder Woman and Superman, then who is he? He's the Flash. I thought that was super lame. Yeah. But here, you're almost justifying that really lame scene where sure. they're like, he's the Flash. Like, yep. And it's I have a hard time with the Flash being like, oh, running fast is going to save everything. But here, he actually proves it right. Mm -hmm. And I like his interactions with Hal here. I yep. think they balance each other really nicely. Now, we gotta talk about, because we talked about this a little bit in the previous issue, we had the story of Gene Loring, Black Lantern, and Adam and Mara. And basically in this, Dead Man shows up, he takes possession of Gene, and he tells them that there's something in his head that every Black Lantern in the universe, which has to be billions of them, if not trillions in the whole universe, are converging on Earth. And we cut to this amazing, two-page spread by Yvonne Reese that I think probably took him a week to draw oh my God. of the billions of Black Lanterns and the Black Lantern planet coming to Earth. Yeah, if you get real close to it, or if you have it digitally and you pinch in, like the detail in this double-page spread mm -hmm. is in Incredible. It's yes. beautiful. Then we get to Ganthet, who is the coolest guardian. He duplicates Hal Jordan's ring. Mm -hmm. And he joins as a member of the Green Lantern Corps. I love it. Fun fact, uh, Hal Jordan's ring has had the ability to duplicate itself since the Silver Age. In fact, that is how, uh, going to bring in a little bit of uh, Kyle and Jade in, in this, remember from previous issues of Blackest Night. Kyle didn't know that his ring could do this mm -hmm. until like a hundred issues into his run. And then when he had to leave Earth, he duplicated his ring yeah. and he gave it to Jade. So this is a thing that we, that this is kind of a forgotten power of the Green Lantern Corps. Well, D Gambit didn't forget and he's gonna use it on everyone. Well, because Gambit is one of the guardians that made the Green Lantern ring. Yeah, and yeah. here's, where we get even cooler. Again, I've said this several times, I think Jeff Johns, I think this run of Green Lantern is the greatest Green Lantern run of all time because Jeff Johns, you can clearly tell, has read Green Lantern. Oh, he, and he rem wrote it all, I'm gonna do this, and yep, I'm gonna and he do wrote this, this, and I'm gonna um, do this. Ganthan initializes a program within the power rings of the other Six Lantern rings to also duplicate and deputize other individuals of their cores because they, they can't wait it's for, like an emergency yeah. kind of backup procedure. But see, here's the cool thing about this, and this is why this is such a little a smart little writing thing, because all the rings are based on a Green Lantern ring, mm -hmm. so they all would have this fail safe inside yeah. it, which I think is really cool. And I kind of love the beat that the other colored lanterns are like, no, you can't control my ring, which I think is really cool. So they go out and they seek other people, and I'm going to break them down. Ooh. So we have Ganthet of Oa is the new Green Lantern, we have Barry Allen becomes the new Blue Lantern. We have Mara becomes the new Red Lantern. We have Lex Luthor 
becomes the new Orange Lantern. We have Wonder Woman becomes the new Star Lantern. She's saved from the Black Lanterns. Scarecrow, a Batman, a Batman villain, becomes the new Sinestro Corps, and the Atom joins the Indigo Tribe. So, I wanted to go through those really quickly because I want to go through these one by one, and actually, I want to hear your thoughts on is this person a good oh, choice? Oh, I have thoughts. Okay, so let's start it. Ganthet as a Green Lantern. Great, obvious choice. Great choice. Really smart idea. I agree. I think it's a nice little twisting of yep. to make him an active player. Yep. Barry Allen as the Blue Lantern. <laughs> no. Okay. Why? Absolutely not. I, to I, to me, this feels like. Will, uh, I'm not sorry, Will Hope. Hope, yes. Hope the Blue Lantern, it's kind of a crown. Mm -hmm. If you are a Blue Lantern, you're kind of not better than, but again, like the idea with Kyle, you're kind of more pure than everyone else. Sure, sure. You're kind of holier than everyone else in terms of what a superhero represents. And for me, that is not Barry Allen. Mm -hmm. Barry Allen is lame. Barry Allen does not inspire hope. People don't go out to the streets to be like, I love Barry Allen. Jeff Johns has made him into that mm -hmm. because Jeff Johns loves Barry Allen. I know that Superman and Superboy are off being Black Lanterns right now, but to me, it has to be a member. It should be Supergirl. Mm. Uh, to should be a member of the Super family. I think so. To mm. me, to me, it is it is not Barry Allen. If I was ranking a hundred superheroes yep. for hope, Barry Allen would not enter my list. And, 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 and that's that's just my taste. If you love there's that, there's no right or wrong that's here. That's awesome. There's no right or wrong yeah, here. Yeah. I actually like Barry Allen as a Blue Lantern, although I do realize that he was only chosen because of the story possibilities. Yes. To be honest with you, I never considered Superman, but you are right. It should be it Superman. Should be Superman. Um, to be honest with you, the the person that jumped into my head. But I know because of where we are in this universe at, in 2010 and where we are with Barry Allen that that was never going to happen. I actually, to be honest with you, the choice that popped into my head that seems more obvious than Barry Allen is Wally West. Oh, that's interesting because my choice that I, the, the if I was, if I were writing this, mm -hmm. the choice that I would make to surprise people would be Dick Grayson. Ooh. Bat we would have had a Blue Lantern Batman. Because that's what makes Dick different than Bruce, okay. is he's hopeful. Anyway. All right, let's talk about anyway. the Red Lantern choice, Mara. I love this choice, and to be honest with you, reading this at the time, completely surprised by it. I'm surprised by mm -hmm. it too, but I think it's a smart choice. Yep. I think it works for this, yeah. Lex Luthor of the Orange Lanterns, I think is genius. It is like, Chef <laughs> Kiss, perfect, because you want everything. You yep. want the, it's perfect. Yep. Perfection, an amazing choice. I also think a great choice, Wonder Woman as a star sapphire. Love it, perfect. I think it's really great. And Also, I, she looks awesome. Oh, she looks great in that costume. And also, I think it's a, it's a smart way to get her out of being a Black Lantern. Yeah. By the way, there's a, a panel of Wonder Woman in this issue where she has a Black Lantern axe that I think it looks really cool when the ring is firing. I, I like her little headpiece. Yeah, I think it'd be really <laughs> cool. They should have given foam axes out with that Black Lantern symbol out at Comic-Con. Here is a weird choice for me. I And it's not a weird choice, but I think that there could have been, I understand why you do this literally, Scarecrow as the Sinestro Corps. Now I understand Sinestro, uh, Scarecrow he's is- He's the easiest possibility. He's all about fear. I think there's a better choice. Now I don't, I don't know what the choice is. Um, and I understand, again, you're building this out that you want a couple of villains on this. Yeah, yeah. To make it interesting. Um, you also want to bat, we have no Batman characters here right now. That's true, that's true. And here's the last choice, and I think this is genius. The Atom as the Indigo Lantern. I disagree. To me, this is like a WTF. I get. I guess Jeff really likes the Atom. I love so Ray here Palmer, yeah. I think it's a I, great choice. I don't care for Ray Palmer. I don't see what about Ray, I don't think of Ray Palmer as an empath. I don't think of him as compassionate. Do you have another choice? I, I, I don't put it on your uh, spot. No, but mm -hmm. again, if I were making a list of 100, mm -hmm. Ray Palmer would never enter. To me, compassion, and, and people are not gonna like what I'm gonna say, compassion has to be a woman, mm. I think. You know, I'll, I, will, I will say this. And I'd love to debate this with you. Sure. I always have kind of thought that Wonder Woman should have been the Indigo Lantern. But I get why you give her love. Yeah, but don't you think that Wonder Woman's more about compassion than love? Uh, than romantic love, yes. yes. It's more about, the love is more like a sisterhood. But Wonder Woman is always about like truth, right? And truth yeah. to me seems like is always about compassion. I mean, here's a choice that would never have worked, but like sure. Leslie Tompkins. 
Alfred Pennyworth. Yeah, it's not exciting. For compassion, exciting. you know, like, and compassion is weird because it is a quiet, small thing. To be honest with you. I just don't, I don't understand the choice of Ray Palmer. I just well, don't. Well, I'll tell you this. Okay. I actually think, just us talking right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. I actually think that Ray Palmer and Wonder Woman should be flipped. Because Wonder Woman makes oh. more sense as compassion. Now, I'm gonna make my case for Ray Palmer's love. But all the stuff for Star Wars are women, so it's gonna be a woman. But make it a man. Flip I, it. I know, God forbid flip we flip the Let's yeah, flip yeah, yeah. it. Let's put all him right. in the sexy bikini. Who cares? <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, make, make, your, make, the, make the case for Ray Palmer. Okay, a lot of this storyline is Ray Palmer dealing with Gene Loring. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a Ray Palmer. You gotta think about the DC Universe at this time. This is three years of Ray Palmer mourning the woman that he has loved, Gene Loring. Now, if you go, if you ever read the origin story of Ray Palmer, in the very first issue, it's in one of the show, I think Showcase 63, I think, something like that. Gene Loring's in that issue. He proposes to Gene Loring in that issue. Mm -hmm. So Ray Palmer clearly loves her. And Gene Loring is in this storyline. Mm -hmm. To me, it makes more sense that the Atom is love. Sure. I mean, another obvious choice, which I wouldn't do because our point of view, Star Sapphire, is Carol Ferris, but the other obvious choice to me is Lois Lane. Ooh. But Lois, we haven't seen in but this Lois issue. and Carol, like Carol's a knockoff Lois Lane, yeah. so I get it, you're not gonna bring in Lois Lane. Yeah. But to me, like, you make it Lois, you have her fight Superman. I think that's cool. I love the two-page spread of the the new uh, members. Oh, uh, the looks Adam, amazing. the Adam actually looks really cool. His his little like uh, loincloth tribe costume. You know why this is cool? Savage sword. Because his of costume. The Adam. Because his his costume is the savage sword of the Adam, which is a special place here in our Crisis Club That's and right. Blackest Night Club arts. Because our amazing editor Adam Selecta is the savage sword of Adam. Uh -huh. Put that up again, Adam. Oh yeah, it looks good. <laughs> you know what, Adam? Adam. I want to see you in this two-page spread as the Indigo Lantern, Savage Sword of Adam. There you go, everyone out there. Take a look at that. It's beautiful. Adam does amazing work. Adam uh, also cosplays, so we could see him in this in real life. There's a free idea. We're putting the challenge out right now to our amazing editor, Adam, right now to cosplay this at a future Planet Comic Con in Kansas City. There you Missouri. go. And convince, uh, convince your lovely wife to be a Star Sapphire. Oh, she could be there a good girl. Go. You know what? She has actually, uh, our, his lovely wife, Milena, a new <laughs> wife, uh, has actually cosplayed as Wonder Woman uh, in the yes, past. Yes, I've seen So now we put the challenge out to you. <laughs> you have to be Indigo Lantern, the Atom, and she has to be Star Sapphire Wonder Woman. There you go. The gauntlet is down. And you know what? Uh, if you don't do it, then 400 of our patrons will be very bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so Ashley, let's move into our thoughts on this bunch of Blackest Nights. Uh, overall, what do you think about this section? If I'm looking at this in the overall structure of Blackest Night, I think this is, I think we're buying time a little bit to the end of it. Mm -hmm. This, and, and I enjoy these set of issues. Yep. These set of issues is only exist to build up a bunch of people to fight the pre, like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, to me this feels like double doing. It means like we, we, we created a color core and now we're hitting command C, command V because we need a little bit more to fight the bad guys. So I think this is cool, mm -hmm. but I think this does very little to forward the plot that we're oh, to I sort disagree. of like the denouement, like we're about to hit the climax and this is like the last bit of assembling the team. Mm -hmm. Like we're getting the final magic wielder we need for our D&D &D campaign. So it's cool but I don't know if it serves a ton of purpose overall. Now, I know you've also read this whole event, so you have a different perspective mm -hmm. than I do. And you can probably, you probably know how this is gonna pay off in ways that hopefully in two or three episodes, I'm gonna be like, this was totally amazing and we absolutely needed it. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. So this whole batch, I really dislike Green Lantern 49, just flat, flat yeah. out. Part of that is because I am a service member, I am a veteran, that's a little bit of it, but I just don't, I don't see the point in the storyline. I disagree with this. I think that at this point, the main title, Blackest Night, is firing on all cylinders because event books are different than normal ongoing You're books. You're absolutely right. Because here's the thing, here's my criteria with event books. I read so many comic book events where nothing happens until the last two issues. And I think the great thing that Jeff Johns has done, especially in the main titles, the main book yeah. of Blackest Nights, is that something big happens and every single issue. So this issue is all these other heroes get 
colors. Remember, the last issue was all those other heroes became Black Lanterns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so like, so last issue was like, oh crap, the threat went up. This issue is we're gonna be fine. We have allies, mm -hmm. and so the next one's gonna be like, oh, what's the other complication that's gonna happen? Let's move on to our next issue, Green Lantern Volume Four, Number Fifty. It was a uh, cover date of March 2010. It was written by Jeff Johns, penciled by Doug Monkey, Inc., by Christian Alami and a bunch of others, colored by Ray Randy Mayer and a bunch of others, lettered by Rob Lee and edited by Eddie Berganza. Ash, I'm gonna tell you this. There's something that, that you need to know about Jason Inman, and you probably already know this, but uh, <laughs> Jason Inman loves Parallax. Yes, I, I knew think that. the design of Parallax by Daryl Banks and that whole storyline of Parallax, I think is, is so amazing. So, when I bought this issue, in 2010, and I saw this cover. Which kind of spoils the whole thing. Which is Parallax, <laughs> you know, on the cover. I was so excited. I actually think the variant cover by Jim Lee is really beautiful as well, and this image has been used on And a bunch of posters, collections, prints, prints, posters, yeah. yeah, collections. By the way, if if you all out there watching this are not following Daryl Banks on Instagram, I think he's at GL Prime. Yes. Uh, he is a wonderful follow, and he draws Green Lanterns all the time. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this beginning battle, Ashley, here. I love bit. the first two panels of this. The, the Kosei side? Yeah, I just think it's so smart, and it's such a... Some of these issues have a lot of exposition to remind you of what is happening, and then they kind of have the characters say the same mm -hmm. thing. So for four pages, you're just getting caught up. That'll reset people. That's I fine. understand, and on, and some of the tie-in issues, like the one we're gonna start the next episode with, had, the whole series had nothing to do with mm -hmm. Blackest Night, but I think these two issue, these two panels rather, are a really nice way to catch people up and just be like, this is what we're doing. You're all caught up, good job. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have our multicolored core, and we have our multicolored deputies with them going in there, battling and going crazy. And then we get to see somebody that I didn't think we'd ever see in comic books again, Aqua Baby. Yep, Arthur Jr. pops up and Aquaman's like, look at my little dead zombie baby, yeah. Red Lantern Mara. I love, first of all, I love Mara as a Red Lantern. I actually think this is a really smart use of a, mm -hmm. a dead baby because uh, the death of- we saw that in Blackest Night Titans. Yes, and the death of a prince is arguably, per our geek history lesson, one of the greatest Aquaman stories. Mm -hmm. So I really liked that sequence uh, for like Mara's arc in this series. Yeah. I thought it was smart. Totally. All right, so I want to move forward because this sort of deals with all the different colored deputies. And we get a big character that shows up in this issue, and it's a character that usually shows up when a lot of big cosmic events happen. If you remember, if you watched Crisis Club with us here, you know this character showed up to punch the Anti-Monitor in the face, talking about the Spectre. Now, Ashley, you know who the Spectre is. Can you explain to the audience who the Spectre is? He's Oliver Queen. It's incorrect. I was telling correct for the Arrowverse. He is God's vengeance on Earth, yep. which is a whole complicated implication. He's the spirit of vengeance. Uh, he's usually in the body of Christmas Allen, although Hal Jordan has taken him on from time to time as well. Yes, I was going to say that. That's the reason why the Spectre is in this event, because Hal Jordan was the host of this. Uh, Black Lantern Spectre looks amazing. Uh, yes, and this is the Christmas Allen Spectre. But uh, just to let you know, in case you didn't know, Hal Jordan became the Spectre during the Day of Judgment storyline written by Jeff Johns when a fallen angel attempts to Get gain right the Spectre's power. <laughs> How Jordan then lost the Spectre during Green Lantern reboot, that's mm -hmm. the reboot that started this whole run of Hal Jordan. Now, this Spectre turns Hal Jordan into a Black Lantern, which by the way, uh, action figure spotlight for you all out there, I own the action figure of the DC Universe classic series of Black Lantern Hal Jordan. Do you really? I do, I don't know where the heck it is, it's in a box somewhere, <laughs> but I have it. So it's, I'm not gonna bring it out for this video. That would take as long as it would take to record this video. But I do own that, yes I do. So then the ultimate plan is they realize that the Spectre is scared of Parallax. Now this is a nice little continuity beat when Ganthet, the coolest guardian, reveals that the embodiment of fear was trapped in all four of the Earth Green Lanterns, Kyle, Hal, Guy, and John. Mm -hmm. And so connecting them all brings out the embodiment of fear, Parallax. Now, Ashley, do you like Parallax? Just the embodiment of fear Parallax? I'm not talking about Hal Jordan Parallax. Do you like this I idea? Like, I like both versions of Parallax. Like I, like par I like Parallax. Oh, nice. And I like that Sinestro wants Parallax. Well, of course, because it's the embodiment of him. Yeah. So eventually, Hal decides to take possession of Parallax, just like they did in Emerald Twilight, and he gets the really cool Daryl Banks-designed Parallax costume on, 
with the big smiley face, which is something that they kind of retconned into Green Lantern Rework, but it's fine. The in, the the like slow four panel introduction of Hal as Parallax, where they reveal the White Temples, mm -hmm. is so cool. It's so cinematic. Yes. Like that is something that if I were making an adaptation, I would rip this off entirely with my lighting designer. Yeah, totally. So any final thought? To me, this was a hell of a cliffhanger. I loved it as a 90s fan. Any other thoughts, Ashley, here? I think this issue is the best of the batch that we read. Mm -hmm. And I like the introduction of the Spectre and the reintroduction of Parallax because now we know that the big battle's coming. And that's like, ultimately, that's mm -hmm. the most fun in every event mm -hmm. is like, and there's been a lot of fighting at this point, but watching everyone. Um, all right. So oh, and the orange lanterns get a cool, get cool stuff to do in this issue. Like what? This is where Lex. This is where Lark Fleas decides he's going to take down Lex Luthor, and Lex tries to justify why they should save Earth. And we talked a lot about how is Lark Fleas a good character, and mm -hmm. I think this is like continuing the trend of like Lark Fleas is super funny in this issue, even though it's only in a few panels. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about this whole thought bunch of Blackest Night all together. Ashley, anything that you disliked about this section of Blackest Night? This Green Lantern 50, I'm just going to say for me, I think really knocks it off the rails because I think it, it's an excellent part of Blackest Night, but also it's a great 50th issue. And 50, mm. every, 50 issues and 25 issues. anniversary issues should always be big, and I think that one definitely delivered. I am not super fond of the Flash mm. tie-ins. They're fine for, for my money, but I think these two Green Lantern, the Green Lantern and Green Lantern Corps, issues are really good and they're nice in a complimentary way yes. because we're able to add something to both the mythos of Mogo of the Spectre and Parallax. So both of these issues have kind of changed only by adding little adjustments, these staples of the Green Lantern universe. And that's cool. And there are things that will stay in continuity mm -hmm. for good and for ill going forward. So I think the Green Lantern centric stuff here is really good. Nice. All right. So now there are plenty of other issues of Blackest Night that you can read. We're only covering the important ones, of course. But if you need to read it all, here is a segment that we like to call so you can get a little bit more. It's the Blackest Night before it's the best graphic of the entire video. <laughs> so if you want to stay up to, to, you know, snuff with Blackest Night, the two issues that we didn't cover that you should read during the section are Blackest Night Wonder Woman number two and Blackest Night JSA number two. All right, Ashley, let's talk about the legacy of this section of Blackest Night. Is there anything that stands out to you that is important to, like, going forward to how they adapt this or like hinting back to the past of this section of Blackest Night. The rogues definitely come to mind for me because the thing, even though I, I don't necessarily love the rogues, the things that I think the tie-ins do really well is when they play on the larger continuity in the same way that that's what I liked about these mm -hmm. Green Lantern issues. And the rogue stuff I think is super important here, not only because it leads to like you said with Owen, like a couple of characters who are gonna be important in different iterations of the DC Universe going forward, but because they're things that are important to Barry Allen, and we know that Barry's gonna to have to tackle mm -hmm. them. So those are things that stick out to me. Mogo, obviously, and the change and how powerful Mogo is. Mm -hmm. And then, I, I mean, I, it's hard not to just focus on Guy Gardner because we know there's a Red Lantern series coming mm -hmm. right around the corner. So how about you, what sticks out to you? Parallax. The idea that this 1994-95 villain that was an offhand is still um, important. 20 years later, 15 years later, I think is pretty important. Parallax to me is such a big part of the Green Lantern story. And to me, I, it's really it was really nice to see that costume again and to see like the hints back to Parallax. Because most writers would like to just forget the time that Hal went crazy and murdered two billion people, mm -hmm. but it happened. Yeah. It happened. And for me as a Green Lantern fan, that was the run that I came into it. So to me, I can never, I like Hal Jordan and I like this run of Hal Jordan, but I, I will never forget that the first time I met Hal Jordan was as a super villain. If you were in charge of adapting it for the screen, small or large, would you include Parallax? How do you mean? Well, if some, if I'm Greg Berlanti and I say, Jason, I would like you to be in charge of uh, the Blackest Night adaptation. Do you say, I absolutely want to do the Parallax beat? Well, that's a... That's a way more complicated question than because you know cause my question to you would honestly be like, has there been a Green Lantern series before this? Who stars in the Green Lantern well, series? Well, let's you know like saying? let's assume obviously <laughs> that let's assume that that would be doable and would make sense in continuity, right? Like, do you think that the appearance of Parallax is important enough that it would have to be included in an adaptation? Look again, this is this is a super complicated question. The best answer I can give you is literally like because uh, there's so much continuity in that uh, to answer this question. The best I can answer that question is that. If I'm adapting Blackest Night, 
in our Green Lantern series stars Hal Jordan, Parallax is only the embodiment of fear. He's nothing else. Okay, I think that's fair. There's there's nothing else. Like, you just can't do the 90s storyline unless you actually do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they're never going to do it because every Green Lantern series is going to star Hal or John. It's going to happen. Like, as much as I love Kyle, that's exactly what they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So that's the best I can give you. And that, you know, that's the best sure. I can dig my way out of that answer. Okay, so we'll see you back here for the final episode. And if you want to be prepared for the next episode, you need to read Green Lantern 51, Blackest Night, number seven. Green Lantern 52, Woo. Blackest Night, number eight. That is it. Guys, we are so far along this line. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out. Thank you to everybody over at Patreon at patreon.com slash Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N for making Blackest Night Club happen. We couldn't have made it without you guys over there. So thank you so much for watching. Only one more time left. I guarantee you the last episode of Blackest Night Club is going to be an hour long. There's Great. no way we're going to get through this without a lot of talking. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason, not a Black Lantern. In the I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And thanks for watching Blackest Night Club.